Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to yet another Friday Reads. This Friday Reads will function as my third Vlogmas video, so welcome to day three of Vlogmas. This is one of the few Vlogmas videos that I will be recording in real time. Most of my Vlogmas videos I have pre-recorded and scheduled to upload, so you'll see those as, as they upload. And it did hit me a, a few days ago that doing Vlogmas like that is kind of cheating, because I feel like part of the challenge of Vlogmas is that you're actually sitting down to record videos every day of December through Christmas. And so I'm obviously not doing that. I just did a lot of recording over Thanksgiving break and have a bunch of things scheduled to upload. So whether or not I'm really participating in Vlogmas is up for debate, I suppose. But if I'm not really participating in Vlogmas, then I guess I'm just doing my own weird little Lukash thing where I post a video every day in December through December 25th. So there you go. But anyway, I will stop talking and get into the books. And I will start uh, on yet another update on a book that I'm kind of chipping away at. I know I bring it up every week and never feel like I have much to say about it, but uh, when the light of the world was subdued, our songs came through. A Norton anthology of Native Nations poetry. Uh, I didn't make much progress on this this week. I would like to get to the halfway point of it. I'm almost at the halfway point, just barely. And I would like to get there soon, maybe at least by the end of the year, if not this weekend. But the thing with poetry is I have to be in the mood to read a poem. I think it's really bad to force yourself to read a poem. I think that's the perfect way to just make sure that you don't like the poem you're reading. So for forcing yourself to read poems is, I think, always a bad idea. And so I can't really force myself through a book like this. Like I might sort of plug away at another book, like a novel or a piece of nonfiction. So I haven't made as much progress as I would like in this, but you know, it'll happen when it happens. So uh, that's my first little update. Uh, and second of us, second off, I want to get to the really substantial book that I finished this week. And this week I finished a really great novel, and it's this, uh, Unquiet by Lynn Ullman. And this was published in 2015, I believe, and Lynn Ullman is a Norwegian author. This was translated by Thilo Reinhard. And this novel is a piece of autofiction, and it's primarily about Lynn Ullman's relationship, relationship with her mother and father, who are Liv Ullman, hence the last name Ullman, and Ingmar Bergman. And for, for those who maybe aren't familiar, Liv Ullman is a great Norwegian actress. I love her so much as an actress. And Ingmar Bergman is a, is a great Swedish director, one of my favorite di film directors of all time. And so this novel is primarily about Lynn Ullman's relationship with both of them. Less so about Ingmar and Liv's relationship with each other. There's very little of that, but it's primarily about Lynn's relationship with the two of them. And the other piece of the novel that is prominent is Ingmar Bergman's death. It's about his deteriorating health, his deteriorating physical health, being confined to a wheelchair, and dementia, and then finally death. And so the novel is a lot about motherhood and fatherhood and daughterhood and girlhood and coming of age. Something that's very interesting is the relationship between Lynn and her mother. There is this, I feel like, ambivalence to their relationship. This sort of push and pull between the two of them because they clearly love each other, but they also kind of both seem to want to separate. And something that's dealt with in the novel a lot is how Liv Ullman didn't really want to be a mother all that much, and Ingmar Bergman certainly didn't want to be a father. And that's a very interesting dy dynamic. Another thing that's interesting about the novel is that it's also about what we can, what you can know about about your parents. You know, we all kind of have ideas of what our who our parents are, but we can never quite know whether I, our ideas of them are correct. We can only ever have an approximation of them because we've only known them for a portion of their lives, right? They had this whole life before we were born that is very difficult for us to have any kind of access to, even if they talk about what happened then. And that is a really interesting piece that plays a big role in the novel as well. But the most powerful part of the book for me is the dealing with Ingmar Bergman's aging and death. And 
what's really powerful about it is just how one deals with the loss of a parent. I think that if you've ever lost a parent, this book would be really powerful for you to read. Uh, but also, if you've ever, ever had a parent or a grandparent who have suffered from dementia, then this would also be a really powerful book to, for you to read, because Bergman did have dementia towards the end of his life. And the way that that's dealt with, from both Lynn's perspective and other people's perspectives and his perspective, is so real and sympathetic. And that was probably the most powerful part of the book for me. I have had one grandparent uh, who, who had pretty bad dementia who died. And so that those parts were extremely powerful for me as well. It's such a good book. There's a lot jam-packed into it. It's, it's not short, but it's also not super long. But it feels like there's a lot to talk about with it. But I can just wholeheartedly recommend it. The one knock against it is the fact that the opening section of it, it's divided into six parts, and the first part of the book is by far the weakest. The book just gets off on such a bad start. The writing in that first section is very staccato, and something about it is kind of alienating and mechanical. And the narrative in the first part, I feel like, is also just kind of alienating. I can't quite put my finger on why. But there's just something about that first, the way that first part is written, the way the narrative is told, that just makes it really difficult to connect with. But once you get past that part, then the novel just takes off and just soars. It is a great, great reading experience. So I can definitely recommend this. And I would also recommend it to people who are interested in Ingmar Bergman, because obviously there's a lot of him in it, uh, because it has a lot of details of his personal life that you might not, not otherwise know about. That was a buddy read, by the way, with uh, Jason from Old Booth Chapter and Verse, and we had a great conversation. I actually still need to leave my message about the last chunk to Jason, but he still needs to leave the, his message about part five to me. So anyway, I yeah, this is a great book. Very happy I read it. So, next book I want to talk about is one I have talked about several times before already. It's uh, Frederick Douglass, Prophet of Freedom by David Blight. And right now in the book, we are very deep in the Civil War years. And there is a, is a lot in these sections about the push from Frederick Douglass and many others to get the United States government to allow black men to enlist in the Union army. And then after they f the U Union army does finally start enlisting black men, there's a lot about the continued discrimination that they faced in the army, right? They had reduced pay, they faced racism from white soldiers, white officers, they weren't allowed to be commissioned at all as officers themselves. And what I'm just really liking is how this book centers the experience of black Americans during the Civil War, which is not often done, necessarily. You know, even when I was reading This Hallowed Ground by Bruce Catton, which has a great Civil War history, it did talk a lot about black people during the Civil War, but it always talked about them as kind of a collective, as this ambiguous, nebulous collective. Whereas in this book, it really does do a lot to center the experiences of individuals. In particular, of course, Frederick Douglass, but also his two sons who enlisted in the army. Uh, and I thought I would just read you one quote from uh, chapter uh, 18, chapter uh, 19 of the book, which I think just encapsulates so much of American history at, when it comes to race. And it, it's it specifically in reference to the discrimination in pay that black soldiers faced. They were paid uh, $10, whereas most union, uh, white Union soldiers were paid $13. And actually they weren't even really paid $10 because the government deducted $3 to pay for, I believe, uh, clothing. So really they were paid $7. Uh, and so this is what David Blight writes, and I think it's just a really great sentence. Uh, so this is it. He says, In a pattern so old and agonizing, history once again giveth profound change while racism waited in the wings and taketh it back. Uh, yeah, and, you know, that's just a great summation of this country's history with uh, racism. Uh, so, anyway, this is continuing to be great. Uh, it's a buddy read. I, again, sometimes forget to mention it's a buddy read with Bill Rutenberg and Patri Patrice Jones and Peg from the History Shelf. And we're still having a great buddy read. Uh, and then, 
Another reading update is in this, another buddy, this is another buddy read with Sharon Goforth. So the collected essays and poems of Henry David Thoreau. This past weekend we read two very short essays called Love and Chastity and Sensuality. And I didn't get much out of these two essays. They were both kind of about the role that sex plays in romantic relationships. And Thoreau seems to have this idea that the deeper the romantic attachment between two people is, the less interested they will be in sex, I guess. And Sharon and I sort of talked about it, and we, we were both kind of talking about how we just don't really agree. Uh, and, and these two essays were probably better than A Yankee in Canada, but th they were still kind of just weird and off-putting and not super interesting. I actually said to Sharon that I thought that there were parts of these essays that almost read like something someone would write while they were stoned. So there's that for you. So they were definitely better than a Yankee in Canada, but they were not super interesting. But the next essay that we're reading is Slavery in Massachusetts, and that should be fascinating. Uh, so I'm excited to get to that, and I'll be reading that this weekend. And finally, we come to the book that I'm going to finally get around to finishing, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I only have The Return of the King to finish now, and now that I'm done with Unquiet by Lynn Ullman, I can dive into it head first. And I don't think I will have it finished by my next Friday reads. I may be very close to finishing it by next Friday, but I think probably I'll have to wait till the Friday after that to really wrap it up and and finish it. But yeah, really excited to finally get to the end of this book. I've been reading it now for probably three months or something, so it'll be fun to finally finish it. And I also plan to watch the movie once I finish the book. I've been watching each movie as I've been going along, so I'll finally be able to watch The Return of the King. So anyway, I will be working on that this weekend as well, uh, but that is all that I have. I hope you all are having a good start here December. Uh, maybe it's colder where you are than it is here. It feels like spring here, basically. I was hoping that we might get snow. I'm hoping that when I go home to New York, maybe there will be a white Christmas. I don't know. I always hope for a white Christmas, and it seems to rarely happen these days with uh, climate change and everything. But let me know what the weather is like where you're living. Let me know what you're reading and how you're doing. And I will leave it at that. You all have a good weekend. And I guess you'll be seeing me tomorrow in my next Vlogmas video. So, talk to you later. Bye.